Hello everyone. The following presentation will be on short circuit and more importantly on ground grid analysis. Our presenters today will be Yi Chen B, Senior Electrical Engineer and Product Manager at ETAP, and Victor Andrade, v VP Business Development at ETAP. Let's start off with going over the agenda for the presentation. Today's presentation will introduce the short circuit module in ETAP, as well as the ground grid systems. It will also go over the importance of this safety module, and it will also go over the features and capabilities that are unique to ground grid systems, followed by a conclusion. Let's begin by as asking the question, why perform a short circuit study? And let's go over the following three items. Number one, it is to calculate the amount of maximum fault current at a given location. The safety aspect of this is to determine the protective device capability to withstand a fault current. So essentially, we want to make sure that the protective devices um, are not overdutied. And finally, to protect the equipment from large mechanical forces based on maximum fault current. Next, I would like to go over some of these capabilities using the software. Here we have a typical power distribution network on an industrial and commercial facility. Our network is being fed by a 34.5 kV interconnection with the utility or the local grid. And there is also cogeneration at 13.8 kV from a synchronous machine. And then these grids that you see here are essentially um, ground grids. These are at the substation level. You could change the, the way they appear. But they're, they're, the way we lay them out on top of the substation bus is so we can populate the line to ground fault directly onto the ground grid system study. And finally, down here, there's the medium voltage distribution and some motor control centers right here. Let's first begin by proceeding to select these locations to fault. So I will go ahead and select fault here on this location where the grid is going to be located, these two locations. And first capability and feature that I like to go over is running a three phase device duty. So what ETAP has done now is it has performed a maximum available fault calculation as per the ANSI standard and provided us with a maximum available fault. But more importantly, we could see the alert display view and we could see that there is one protective device element that has been overduted, meaning it has been flagged as the rating limit uh, not being able to withstand the maximum available fault. So you could think of this capability as kind of like a, an operator, right? This is your digital twin and you have an operator. When you run this simulation, um, ETAP will automatically flag any protected devices that may be overdutied, ranging from circuit breakers to fuses, switch, um, ATS, and also the, the uh, bracing capability on switchgear, MCC, um, as highlighted on this location. Next, uh, what I like to do is I would like to um, model two operating scenarios. So the first one is under normal conditions. And then from my, um, from my configuration manager, I'm going to go ahead and select emergency. So you, you now see that some of the, some of the, um, some of these branches have been grayed out, meaning they're de-energized. Now my facility is on emergency mode. I will quickly run the same simulation. I see my updated available fault values for both locations. And now using the capability of the uh, short circuit analyzer, I can quickly compare between the two. Finally, I would like to populate my single line to ground fault 
um, that are, that is to be for grid one and grid two. And for that, I'm going to run the maximum available fault. And this will provide me with the ability to display uh, and also publish three phase bolted fault, line to ground, line to line, line to line to ground. And in this instance, we're in, in this particular exercise, we're going to leave it as line to ground, which is the um, type of fault to be used by the ground grid systems module. At this point, I'd like to pass it over to Yi Chen. Hello, everyone. My name is Yi Chen Bi. I'm the senior electrical engineer and the product manager of the ground grid module. In this presentation, I would like to show some challenges which engineers may encounter during the ground grid design, and also to show how ETAP solution can help engineers to solve those problems. In the world of the ground grid study and design, the industry has been facing multiple challenges, which I would like to highlight some here. The first challenge, which is also the most important reason we wanted to design and construct the ground grid is to guarantee the safety. When the land to ground fault happens, the high fault current will inject into the grid and the surrounding soil. In this case, the high fault current can produce high voltage on the equipment and the surrounding soils, which is very dangerous to person when standing on this area. However, if we already have a properly designed grid in this area, we can limit the voltage under certain threshold to guarantee their safety. The second challenge is to design a good grounding system to make sure the power system works within the operating limit. In this case, a good electric pass is required to allow the fault current falling into the soil. Another challenge comes from the shot circuit protection and coordination. We wanted to reduce the fault clearing time by reducing the ground impedance. The last challenge, which may be overlooked sometimes, is the soil interpretation. We usually spend a lot of time on designing the grid itself, but overlook the accuracy of the soil measurement and the soil modeling. It turns out that the ground grid analysis result can be compromised by it. So, as our attempts to solve these challenges, we provide multiple tools to help engineers efficiently finish the design and decision procedure without diving into too much calculation details. As a solution, we provide two calculation methods based on the either IEEE or finite element method to help engineers to find the touch and the step voltage on the grid. We can also calculate the ground impedance based on the different grid configurations and the soil environment. To help the engineer to interpret the soil measurement data, we develop the soil analysis tool to convert the soil measurement data connected by the winner 4 pin method into the soil model. Besides, the step and touch potential can be visualized through both 3D plotting or 2D plotting. So what benefit can we obtain from the computer modeling of the ground grid system? Generally, the computer modeling can predict the ground grid performance and also identify the safety issues before the construction. It is less expensive than field testing for example, it would be good if we can calculate the touch and step voltage in theory at each point ahead of the construction. With the help of the modeling, one can identify the area exposing to a high voltage and the engineer may invest more copper in this specified area instead of on the entire site. Also, the computer modeling can do the design optimization and can be easily expanded for the future project. In ETAP, the software, software provides two different methods to analyze the ground grade. There are IEEE method and finite element method. These two methods share some common features, like both methods can import the short circuit calculation results from the ETAP one diagram to do the analysis. Both methods can provide the ground resistance maximum touch and step voltage. Also, both methods can use the soil analysis results. A lot of times, 
Engineers collect the on-site soil measurement data and then use the graphic master to provide by the standard to interpret the measurement data into the soil modeling. However, generally this procedure is quite time consuming and may involve errors when read from the curve. So in ETAP, the program provides this handy tool to users. So users just sample into the measurement data and the program will calculate the correct soil model based on the IEEE 80 standard. Let me briefly discuss the difference of the two methods here. So the first one is the IEEE method. The IEEE method uses the equation provided by the IEEE 80 standard. It is an empirical method which can provide only the maximum touch and step voltage without knowing the detailed voltage distribution for every point of the grid. This method supports only the single grid modeling and supports only certain regular grid shapes. In this case, this method works better for simple ground grid design when only the maximum voltage is required to be known. The second method is the finite element method, which is an analytic method. This method supports an irregular ground grid shape and more than one ground grid in the simple modeling. Better than IEEE method, finite element method provides not only the maximum touch and step voltage, but also the voltage distribution on the entire grid site. This method will work better if you would like to analyze the complex grid system or more than one ground grid system together. Or simply you want to detail three-dimensional voltage plotting. Sometimes the scale of the ground grid may be quite large, like the one we generally use in the solar farm, or generally sometimes this configuration quite, can be quite complex. To avoid redoing those drawings in the ETAB again, we also provide a handy tool to the user, which can be used in the AutoCAD to help the engineers to export their ground grid drawings. I would like to quickly show a sample of the ground grid system in the ETAB program. Okay, let me use a sample project to demonstrate how the ground grid system works in the actual design. Currently, the presentation is showing the interface of the ground grid system. As we can see, there are three different sections in this interface. The top left section, which is this black area, is the three-dimensional view of the ground grid system. From this view, the engineer are able to look at this system from any directions or any angles by moving around this ground grid system. This three-dimensional view is pretty handy if you have a very large system or very complex system, or if you have a multi-layer system. So you are able to look at your system easily and also know the rough location and the rough shape for your system from this wheel. The right-hand side is the cross-section wheel of the ground grid system. This is also the soil wheel of the system. From this wheel, we can know several information from here. We know that currently there are three different soil layers and also all my horizontal conductors are buried into the second layer and the third layer. The bottom section, which is this also white area, is the location where we can modify or design our ground grid system. If we double click on any conductors or any rods, the program will pop up a message which is called conductor editor. In this editor, the program lists all the available conductors to allow the user to view and also make modifications of each of them. So as a user, we can just simply modify any parameters like the coordinate, insulation, or size by using these con conductor editors. As always, if you have a very complex system and you do not want to manually draw the ground grid system mm -hmm. like this, you can always import it from AutoCAD. So let's suppose we already have a such ground grid system available to run the calculations. So we can start to run it. To do that, we can just simply click on the screen buttons to start the, to launch the calculations. 
now I'm not going to run it at this moment to save some time. Suppose I already have the result. Once I finish the calculation, the program will automatically return such alert wheel to allow the user to look at the most important information about the current analysis. From this wheel, we can look at that. We have the maximum calculated touch and step potential and also their corresponding tolerable voltage. As an engineer, we may notice that currently the touch voltage is a little bit higher than the tolerable voltage. And also the program also alert the user that the maximum touch voltage is exceeding the tolerable limit in the bottom section. So we will have to fix this issue by adding more coppers into this ground grid systems. All right. So if say I wanted to look at the plotting of the system, what can I do? I just click on this plot selection button and the program will allow the user to choose several different plotting types. It has the absolute voltage, top voltage and step voltage and also allow the user to choose either three-dimensional plotting or 2D countering plotting. In this case, suppose I wanted to look at the charge voltage. For both types, I just select those and click OK to generate. After a while, it will give the plotting for the voltage. OK, this is our 2D countering for the touch potential. So. Let me just move my cursor on top of it. As we can see, once the cursor on top of the wheel, we can easily look at what would be my current coordinate and also their corresponding voltage. Okay, if I look at the three-dimensional wheel of the plotting, we can also move around my plotting and look at the plotting from any directions or any angles. When I move my cursor on top of it, I can also read the voltage and their corresponding coordinates. And last the features I want to show is the soil analyzers. So if I click on this area and go to the soil editor, we can look at this interface. There is a section allow the user to enter the soil measurement data from on-site. So the, as a user, I can just grab the winner 4-pin method measurement table provided by the on-site engineer and enter all those data into this section. And once I click the calculated button, it will give me the soil models based on my soil measurement data. In this case, we can notice that the soil resistivity of my top layer, it would be 73 ohm meter and the lower layer would be 287 ohm meter. So say I wanted to use this measurement data into my calculations, I can just simply click on the update button and all the information can be transferred to this page. Thank you, Yichen. As a conclusion for today's presentation, to provide ETAP's arc safety in not just short circuit or not just ground grid modules, but it is to provide the latest breakthrough simulation software technology for the evaluation of electrical hazards. ETAP is also committed to the continuous research and development of new domestic and international analysis methods. And our design principles are to provide the most advanced simulation algorithms and consider the human factor to reduce the risk of electrical injury, as we have seen on this presentation. Thank you everyone for attending today's safety presentation.